This is the Lee & Lee 011 Dynamic. Specifically the Evo, probably one of the most popular 011 cases that have ever existed. We don't need this anymore. Because now we've got the 011 Dynamic Evo XL. It's bigger, <laughs> like me. Now, realistically, I could just say, hey guys, it's an Evo, but it's bigger, and that'd be the end of the video. But this is Lee and Lee, so you know they probably made some changes other than that. But to really understand how different it is or what it's like to build in, we have to build in it. So I chose some average, just everyday parts, nothing crazy, you know, not much, but it's mine. I got a 7950X3D, just, I didn't want to go crazy on the CPU, you know. I've got an ROG Crosshair X670E Extreme because to this day, I still don't have any other brand X670 for whatever reason. It's an Asus board, it's all I got. Nothing crazy, but the Dark Power 13,000 watt ATX 3.0. 13,000 watt? Dark Power 13. Thousand watts. Oh, I thought it was 13,000. I'm just. No, I said this is an average build. We're not going with 13,000 watts no. today. That's tomorrow's video, Phil. That makes sense. Anyway, it's an ATX 3.0 power supply, so it'll plug into our not much, but it'll do RTX 4090 Founders Edition graphics card. Um, but of course, it can't be a Lee and Lee video without filling it up with a whole bunch of Lee and Lee Uni fans, as well as their brand new Galahad 2 LCD SL Infinity 360 AIO. Oh, and then of course we've just got a 980 Pro. It's a PCIe Gen 4 SSD, so. Only 7,000 megabytes a second. That's so plebeian. So anyway, um, yeah, I'm not gonna even bother doing an unboxing portion of this video because I just need to build it. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, I've said this a million times, taking a walk through the case, although this one's probably big enough to take a walk through the case. Um, I could. Phil definitely could. You could use this as like a cubby, like sit in there as like a, anyway, moving on. Building in it is the ultimate way to figure out how a case actually feels. So let's build it.
Okay, you know what? I, I have been satirical, half serious and over the days where I'm just like, okay, enough of the Evo, enough of the Lee and Leo 11 dynamic series, we get it. The XL is by far, the Evo XL is by far my favorite dynamic yet. So it's not just scaled up in, in a few different dimensions, giving you a lot of room. As you can see, we have three of the reverse blade, let me get the box here. So these are the reverse blade Unifan Infinity Mirror. These look like as they're turning, they would be blowing air down. They're not. The pitch of the blades is backwards, so it's pulling air through. These are the 140s right here. So tip, this is the traditional way where the air comes through the cage. So they didn't give me any of the reverse airflow for the 140, but this still looks all right because the nice thing about the, the Lee and Lee fans is the fact that the lighting is present on both sides of the fan. So whichever way you turn it, you either get the infinity mirror effect on the hub or you get this nice aluminum piece with uh, RGB lighting around it in the center. Um, the same thing exists here for the Galahad 2 LCD, which they provided for this build. So as you can see, obviously it's got an LCD screen right here. This is just one of the preset animations that we stuck in there. It's just controlled by one USB-C cable that is a 90 degree that comes right off the pump. It goes right down to a USB 2. And then it's got a four pin PWM or four pin um, PWM fan header, fan wire, that is hooked up over here to our water pump header on the motherboard, which is controlling the speed of the pump and the power of the pump. So it's very, very simple to control that. Now we are using the Lee and Lee control box that actually came with the fans and not with the AIO. So the nice thing about the plugs on the outside of the Infinity or the Infinity or INF fans is the fact that we could use the fans cables that came with it, uh, with the individual fans, which would allow us to use a standard three pin uh, RGB header and a four pin PWM fan header that you could use in any sort of combo. Or I switched it with the plugs that came with the control box to allow me to have a single plug to plug into the control box. So we've got now the case lighting and then all three banks of fans. So these three are connected together, those three are connected together, and those three are connected together going to that one control box. Um, and then basically ASUS is controlling the RGB lighting for its own motherboard lighting, the RAM, as well as the matrix, whatever display that that's called. Uh, but anyway, the case, let's get back to the case because that's what we care about here. There have been some pretty significant improvements on this design. Um, let's go ahead and start with my favorite feature so far that they've, that they've done with this. This is this new retention system for your PCI Express devices. So you can see this isn't like the typical, you have to loosen this up and slide this out of the way and then do the screws on your PCI covers and then pull those out, screw down your graphics card and then slide that down and screw it down again, which just makes it a decorative cover. This is actually the retention system. So if I take the screw off, you'll notice this guy flips open. You can see these as soon as they go under tension. Boink. And so that's how the graphics card is mounted. There's no screws actually holding it. So if I flip this a little bit here, so you guys can kind of see the inside, it's black. I know it's hard to see a black case in these videos. We'll try and get some close-ups, but you can see how there's these little nubs that line up with these, and this is rubber, by the way, on this side. Those line up with the nub, so it always gets the device in there nice and square. And then when you screw this down, it just doesn't let it go anywhere. So that's exactly how the graphics card is mounted. It is really solid, actually. I was worried that that was gonna have a wobble or something to it. It truly does not. Now you have to screw it down because if you don't, that's the only thing holding it you know, under tension. So it could just pop open. But as soon as you tighten that down, bam, there you go. Uh, let's see, a couple other things that you can do. There, there is some adjustability too to the motherboard tray where you could actually slide the motherboard up if you wanted. And then you would basically just have to uh, replace these pieces right here. You can see uh, if I undo that, right? So that comes off with this screw here. The Evo, when they introduced the Evo a couple years back, the whole premise of it was modular, where things could be adjusted and reverse ordered and flipped and all that. I just left this in its standard config um, because it's just the way we're used to seeing it. I always have my cases on the right. So it makes sense. And one of the major changes they made is you'll notice there's no side glass on here right now. And the reason is they've redesigned it slightly so that you no longer have to take the top piece off to get the side panels off. 
if you leave the retention screw out. Now that retention screw really is only for transport purposes. And so when the side glass goes on, it's got a little hook that goes over, lines up, you put a screw through there, and then in transit, that glass cannot pop out. That's the little hook I was talking about there. So it's just got a tapered head screw. Um, I think it's a 632nd screw that just screws into that. But because it's got three ball joints, if you will, that's, that does not come out very easily at all. So if you leave that screw out, now you don't have to take the top panel off to get into the side panel. So on the left side, if you leave the thumb screw out, which is right there, at least you have a little locking tab. So you can leave that out, push that back, pull it up, but you can still get the back panel off without having any sort of um, screw holding it down. So that, I think that's an improvement where you don't have to take the top pieces off to access things inside of your case. There you go. This again is actual aluminum. Both of these vents here are air filtered. Um, so you can take these filters off if you want more airflow. Obviously you've got a large one here for your power supply. And then I've got three intake 140s right there. You can also use this as the radiator section if you wanted. So you could move the fans to this side of the bracket. Uh, and then you could put the radiator on the other side. Got this thumb screw. This one, this is pretty much the same as the other Evo. Uh, I just want to sort of show this. This thumb screw is a lock for the, um, the little mechanism here to get the fans in and out. So once you take this thumb screw off, you got this little button right here that you can push. And then if you push that, you can pull, try not to get my fingers here, <laughs> you can pull the whole bracket out. It swivels down and that's how, and then you can just pull it out. So that's how you can get this bracket out to be able to put your radiator on and your fans on and stuff. So clicks in there, very satisfying click. Then the thumb screw, if it's if the thumb screws on in there, it's pretty secure. These are just things that I feel like Lee and Lee has discovered for some reason it's important to lock this down maybe when you're not working on it. I don't know what the reason for that would be. It doesn't need to be tight either. It just stops it from going down. This door right here, you can mount one, two, three drives on here, whether they be three, uh, probably two and a half inch drives. You're not really gonna fit three and a half inch drives. I like that it closes magnetically. And then this is the magnet right here too. So when you open it, it holds itself open while you're working on it. Now you can see I've got a lot of cables going on in here. Um, and I even took these two cages out. These are hot swap um, cages for two, three and a half inch or two and a half inch drives. So you've got your two SATA cables that are already hardwired into it. And then you've got some SATA power right here, which for whatever reason are very individually cabled here, which I think should be sleeved for neatness. Uh, but you get two of these. I took them out because one, I'm not using any, any of this, these, these types of drives anymore. So I find them to be a little bit um, useless for me personally. I'd rather have the space to do wiring, but one goes down there one goes up here. I don't know how many people are still using two and a half inch or three and a half inch drives, but you do get room for four of them by using those cages. Take the cages out, you have room down here for like water pumps or whatever else if you wanna do a water cooling loop with this. So power supply length is something you need to be mindful of because of the fact that unlike the other cases where you could have a couple different spots to mount the power supply, this one only goes in the middle now, which I kind of like because it gives you open grommets on the bottom to get things through to your uh, motherboard like the USB 2 cables or HD audio or ARGB cables, fan cables, whatever. So the, that's not gonna be in the way. It gives you access to those areas of the motherboard. The only thing is, as you can see, you don't have access to the back of the motherboard with this particular case. So any coolers or such, any brackets and stuff have to be installed on the motherboard first, then put the motherboard in the case. Otherwise, you are not gonna be able to install a cooler if it requires access to the back side of the cooler, which pretty much all Intel motherboards do. AM5, not so much because of the fact that that retention bracket doesn't come off. So every cooler these days has been adapted to be able to use the factory AM5 mounting solution just because it doesn't come off. So you don't need access to the back of the AM5 board, but an Intel you do and you can't access it with this case. So mount your cooler bracketry first, put your motherboard in, then you can mount your cooler, which is exactly what I did. But what I started to say the length of the power supply matters because this is your, this is your cable channel right here where all your cables come up and down. So I've got just some, my, my big cables are just sort of chilling here. You can, you can see I've got all the front side cables and stuff just sort of bundled up behind these brackets. Now I can't demonstrate it. And then here's my Lee and Lee controller right there, by the way, this really blends in because everything's black. Matte black against a Mac black case is easy way to hide cables. But the brackets on here are pretty neat because you've got a bajillion options vertically to be able to take those brackets and move them up and down. 
based on where your cables are so that you can have the best opportunity for cable management. Now you got Velcro ties along the backside right here between the grommets, you've got some along the bottom, you've even got some on the outside of those brackets that I just showed. So you have a ton of options for cable management. And then when you're done, you just shut the door. It's out of sight, out of mind. You're not gonna see it anyway because this, this right here is covered by the solid piece of the back panel. So, so many little things, and this is also magnetic, by the way, I wanna point that out. That's why it was like, oink. See, it's magnetized. So it's not only snaps in there, but it's also magnetic. IO on this is on the bottom. So as you can see, it's all right here. We've got four USB 3s, cause there's two USB 3.0 cables on this case, as well as a USB-C and a combo jack right here for your headphone uh, and microphone. This is for HD audio. I don't ever plug mine in, I just don't use it. Um, and then the fan filters for the bottom come out sideways, which is very nice because if it went rear ways, you'd have to move your tower to pull it out if it's up near a wall. So this is, this is also magnetic. You can see the magnets are right here in the corner. So they slide in and then magnetize up so they don't rattle around just like that. Very satisfying ka-chunk when everything's in there. Thought about it after the fact, but I guess it worked out really well. That one of the reasons why I've, I never used the crosshair, this was a motherboard I was initially gonna use for my AMD build I use at home, which also has a 7950X3D. It's an EATX board with 90 degree plugs on the right hand side. So you can see the 24 pin, all the ARGB headers, the fan headers, even the USB 3.0 are all facing on the same plane as the motherboard. So you take a wide motherboard like this and then make the cable stick out on that same axis, you don't have a whole lot of case compatibility with something like that. I wasn't even able to use it in my case. But because of the way that the motherboard tray is elevated, and then you've got these big giant grommets on the side right here that everything go through, it lined up perfectly on that same at, like wall right where it stops. So without like overhanging or looking stupid because it's wider than the area the motherboard's designed for, it's like the exact width of that area. So aesthetically, it actually pleases me because it fits in there perfectly. Um, but you know, it's, it's obvious that they took the Lee and Lee 011 Dynamic Evo and it, the, it, with it being an XL, it's, it's more than just an XL. They clearly took some opportunities to improve upon some of the things that the, uh, the regular Evo um, kind of brought that was above and beyond the O11 Dynamics initial like feature set. So kind of like the order of operations here was they had developed the O11 Dynamic and then the O11 Dynamic Evo, then the O11 Dynamic XL, which is a non-Evo XL. Then they had the O11 Mini, and now we have the O11 Evo XL. So this is quite honestly like their flagship case right here. You can fit, um, up to 160s even on the brackets, which is weird because 160 millimeter fans are not very popular, but you can fit them. Um, you've got the offset rail on the top so that you can move the cooler over. Well, you can't move the cooler over, but you can fit 120, 140, 160 up there. But on the bottom, you have the multi-rail where you can sort of scoot things over left and right for the 120s. I just centered it because that made the most sense. I just stuck my finger in the fan. One other thing I need to point out, let's talk about the power plug for the ATX 3.0 or the 12 volt, High volt, or the, the 12 volt high power plug, or the 12 volt dash six, six plus by two six V2. by two V2.1. <laughs> this particular cable, this is the Be Quiet cable. This is an ATX 3.0 power supply. So it comes with its own 12 volt high power plug. The thing is, you see this zip tie right here? This, so first of all, you've got this zip tie right here underneath this heat shrink, which is very long and very high gauge wire. This wire is very, very stiff. So I would not have been able to come straight out of the, of the card like this and put a tight enough bend on the cable, one, to have a safe bend and not put all that pressure on the plug itself, because remember melting with a 4090 is something we're all concerned about. It would not have cleared the side glass. Now this is an FE card, which admittedly is a little taller than standard cards, but if you get yourself a chonker of a card, like the, some of the Gigabyte cards or the Asus cards and stuff, you might have a serious problem with being able to close your side panel. There's a lot of people on, on the forums and stuff that have showed their older cases and stuff just have no side panel on because they couldn't clear their cable. So this is a cable mod 90 degree adapter, but this is actually their, one point, their V1.1 adapter. This is their upgraded adapter to answer some of the wobbling and loose connection problems they had um, with quite a few of these failing as well. So this is their answer to that. We'll have a separate video coming about that, but that's why the 90 degree adapter is on there because that's the only way we would have cleared the glass. 
But in terms of the case itself, there are just so many possibilities with it. Like I, I think it'd be a fun case to water cool, especially since you know there's going to be distro plates available for the glass uh, that will go right here in the front. There's even probably gonna be distro plates available for the back wall right here so that you don't have to replace the glass. That's so just like we saw with the other Evo um, variants. But anyway, the manual, it's pretty self-explanatory. It tells you about all the different modular stuff and how you can move things around, how to rearrange the case if you want. But even if you had a saggy graphics card, which ours is not sagging, it does even come with, uh, I like how the debauer plate is like separate now, like you have to actually put it on yourself. Anyway, but it does have an anti-sag bracket thing that is very industrial. And I didn't even hook it up because I don't need to because this one's not sagging. But the manual shows you how to install this and it's, every single one of these holes is a different height adjustable spot for this to basically hold your graphics card up. So anyway, that's, I didn't install it because I didn't need to, but it, it's kind of complicated to be honest, but they give it to you. And then this guy over here, they give you an extra one of those cable um, hold downs that I showed you have a whole bunch of adjustability to it. So boom, boom, boom. This guy right here is a USB 2 extension cable. I guess, Maybe they had noticed that some USB 2 devices were not reaching based on where they tend to land. So here's an extension cable for that. And then these are just some additional um, lock off plates for the back wall and such, depending on your use case. So it's a very, very well thought out chassis. I, I didn't expect anything less. There's a reason why any forum you go to, whether it be Reddit or builds.gg or anywhere that has a post your system type of form, you are going to see the 011, any form of it, be the dominant case. And that's just because of the fact that you get so much case for the money. It's not a budget case, but it is definitely a good feature to cost ratio. I think one of the, ha the things that I'm happiest about is the fact that this is real brushed aluminum, to be honest. So many cases have gone with the whole faux brushed aluminum look. And that means you need to be careful with scratching and stuff, which means the fact that I made it through this build without scratching it so far is already a freaking mystery because I am not exactly what you would call a gentle builder but I got it done and it looks great. Thanks to uh, Lee and Lee for sponsoring today's video and sending us the Evo XL and their Galahad LCD2 uh, to take a look at, as well as these fans. We've looked at the Infinity Mirror fans quite a few times in the past. Um, nothing really different there except for the reverse blade, but it's hard to argue with how good this thing looks. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Check out Lee and Lee uh, down in the description. I got some links to their products. And if you wanna know more, you can find out everything over at their website. Thanks for checking us out, guys. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.